are beautiful people. It is Ubi Tepo here. I pray that we are well. I pray that we are all blessed. I have a really quick word for someone today. And I pray that it blesses you in Jesus' mighty name. So I just want to read from Jeremiah 15, verse 15 to 19, right? And it goes as follows. So this is what Jeremiah says to the Lord. O oh Lord, you know and understand. Remember me thoughtfully. Take notice of me. Take vengeance for me on my persecutors. Do not, in view of your patience, take me away. Know that for your sake I endure continual rebuke and dishonor. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became a joy to me and the delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit with the group of those who celebrate, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your powerful hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation at their sin. Why has my pain been perpetual and my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you indeed be to me like a deceptive brook with water that is unreliable? That is a big accusation to make, right? Here, Jeremiah is saying to the Lord, look what I have sacrificed for you. Look what I have given up for you. Lord, I have found my delight in you. I have given myself to you. I have ministered unto your people. And yet I am still suffering. And yet the prayers of my heart are not being answered. He says, why has my pain been perpetual and my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you, God, be, will you, God, indeed be to me like a deceptive brook? Basically, God, are you lying to me? God, are you unreliable? He says, with water that is unreliable. Basically, he is questioning the faithfulness of God. And I believe that many are in this position right now. Lord, I have given. Lord, I have fasted. Lord, I have prayed. Look at the things I've done for you. I've sacrificed. I've lived a holy and pure life. I have been set apart. And yet I am still suffering. I'm still in pain. Nothing seems to change. The breakthrough seems like it is not coming. It is not near. What am I doing wrong? God, are you even faithful? Are you deceiving me? Are you unreliable? So many are in a situation where in fact, they want to cast away their confidence in God. But listen to what the Lord says to Jeremiah. In verse 19, the Lord says, Therefore, thus says the Lord to Jeremiah, If you repent and give up this mistaken attitude of despair and self-pity, then I will restore you to a state of inner peace. I want to read that again for us because it touched me. In fact, it rebuked me, right? Because a lot of my prayers were starting to sound like this. God, are you lying to me? Lord, are you being unfaithful? Lord, are you unreliable? Why have years gone by? Why am I still this? Why am I still that? Why is the situation so impossible? Why does it seem so difficult for me and so easy for others, right? So many of us can relate to this. I believe that. And then the Lord says, if you repent, and you give up this mistaken attitude of despair and self-pity, then I will restore you to a state of inner peace so that you may stand before me as my obedient representative. And if you separate the precious from the worthless, examining yourself and cleansing your heart from unwarranted doubt concerning my faithfulness, you will become my spokesperson. The Lord is saying to you today, if you could only cleanse your heart from unwarranted doubt, there's absolutely no reason why you should be doubting the Lord. You know that he is faithful, even if he does not come through for you. What a wild position that the Lord expects us to be in. And yet we know that when we take up this position, when we say, even if he does not save me, even if he does not come through, through for me, I will still praise him. That is the posture of our hearts that the Lord is expecting from us. So I believe that the Lord in this time is just calling some of you who relate to Jeremiah, who's asking the Lord, God, are you actually faithful? Are you actually reliable? Why is my wound not being cured, right? If you're one of these people, I believe the Lord is saying to you today, can you just let go of this mistaken sense of despair? It is not as bad as you think it is. Can you just let go, right, of self 
self-pity. Guys, self-pity. I actually looked up the definition. Self-pity is a feeling of unhappiness that you have about yourself and your problems, especially when this is unnecessary or greatly exaggerated. Is it me or the enemy always seems to make our problems seem bigger than they are? Oh Lord, I don't have money. Oh Lord, I am single. Listen, something that I always remind people, Hannah had a deep desire. And this desire became so deep in her heart, it resulted in her not living her life fully. It resulted in her feeling self-pity, feeling despair to the point where it hindered her. But listen to what the word says. The minute Hannah got into the presence of God and she cried out and the priest joined her in her faith and said, you know what, the Lord will answer and grant your petition. The word says that Hannah then began to live her life. Hannah's countenance changed and she began to eat and drink again. She began to be present again and live her life. I believe that for some of us, that is what the Lord is saying. Can you let go of your self-pity? Let go of despair. Let go of the bad attitude that your circumstances have brought upon you because that bad attitude is actually blinding you to the character and the goodness of God and it's very easy to get there guys it's very very easy to get to a point where you're saying to the Lord are you even faithful but the Lord is saying let go of self-pity let go of despair and separate yourself from this this lack of confidence in my faithfulness and then I will come through for you. Can you be present again? Can you eat again? Can you live again? Can you find joy and delight in me again? I know, I know the situation is hard. I know that it seems like I'm not coming through for you, but I am. You know why? I am a faithful God. That is my character. Do you believe in my character even when things seem not to be going well for you? That is difficult. But that is what the Lord is asking some of us. Do you believe in me even if I don't come through for you? Just like those three Hebrew boys, they said, we will not bow down to you. You can send us into that fire and our Lord will rescue us. But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we will still not bow down. Can you in this time come to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for self-pity. Forgive me for this mistaken sense of despair. I've been focusing too much on all the things that are not going well in my life. I have forgotten the character of God, that you remain the same and unchanging regardless of my situation. So I will worship you and praise you regardless of how things look. Guys, they say that praise and worship confounds the enemy. Can we get into that posture when we are saying, Lord, I thank you simply because of who you are. I praise you because of who you are. Not what you've done or what you're about to do, but simply because of who you are. Maybe some of you even need to ask the Lord, remind, remind me who you are so that I may praise you. So that I may remove myself from self-pity, depression, anxiety, and despair. So I may change this attitude that makes me feel like you don't love me. May the Lord help us in this time, guys. He is doing mighty and wonderful things in our lives and the lives of others. May you find encouragement in the mighty name of Jesus in this season. God bless you.